Let's suppose you want to add two vectors, a plus b. There are two ways you can think about this process, visually and mathematically. You can visualize this process as placing the beginning of vector b at the end of vector a. The total vector, let's call it vector c, is then drawn from the beginning of vector a to the end of vector b. To think of this process mathematically, you can draw vector A and vector B as right triangles. Remember, to draw a vector as a right triangle, you make the magnitude the hypotenuse and the x and y components the legs of the right triangle. With these components in our drawing, we can see that the x components will combine to form the x component of vector C and the y components will combine to form the y component of vector C. So, when you want to add two vectors visually, you draw them head to tail. When you want to add two vectors mathematically, you add their matching components. Our Python code can help us complete both of these processes. As an example, let's first create a red vector with an x component of 4 and a y component of 1. Then, let's create a blue vector with an x component of 2 and a y component of 4. We can use this new function vecAdd to carry out the process of vector addition. In programming, a function is a set of instructions that the computer can carry out for any inputs that we provide, much like a mathematical function. Whenever you want to add two vectors, you simply type vec underscore add, and then in parentheses type the names of the two vectors you want to add separated by commas. First, this function adds the two vectors x components together. Then, this function adds the two vectors y components together. Then, to help us visualize the vector addition process, this function moves the second vector's starting point to the first vector's ending point. This means that we can create any two vectors we want and the code will take care of the visual addition. Finally, the function creates this new total vector using the starting point of the first vector and the ending point of the second vector. We can check on the vector addition process by printing the black vector's x component and y component and the totals of the red vector and the blue vector's x components and y components. The results match, confirming the process we outlined earlier. If you need to add three or more vectors together, you can repeat this process. Suppose we want to add these three vectors a, b, and c. We can add a plus b and give it a temporary name, and then add this temporary vector to c. When you add vectors, sometimes the total vector will be longer than the original two vectors, but sometimes it will be shorter. Here, for example, we're adding two vectors who point in very different directions. Their y components will combine to produce a long upward y component, but their x components will partially cancel each other, producing a very small x component. At this point, it's important to notice that vector addition does not mean adding the vector's magnitudes. In other words, if red vector plus blue vector equals black vector, it usually is not true that red magnitude plus blue magnitude equals black magnitude. We can print the magnitudes of these vectors and see that the magnitudes do not add in this way. This is an important distinction in vector addition, which our code helps us to learn. There is also a procedure called vector subtraction that acts as the opposite of vector addition. Let's suppose you want to find a vector d that's equal to vector b minus vector a. Rearranging this relationship means that you're looking for a vector that when you add it to vector a, you end up with vector b. This rearranged equation shows us how to draw a vector d based on vector a and vector b. We can also split up this new vector into components and find out that vector subtraction applies to the vector components just like vector addition did. So, armed with this knowledge, we can make a similar function called vec sub that will calculate the first vector minus the second vector. Plugging in our red vector and blue vector, we see the same kind of visual relationship that we determined before. In the description below, you can find more activities you can complete using this code to help you learn more about vector addition and subtraction.